Bless the Lord. I'm going to read from the book of Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. <clears throat> and this is from verse 13. And it says here, When Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that you are John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. <laughs> Others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Then He says to them, But what do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus says to Peter, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father who is in heaven. Now we're going to talk about the keys of the kingdom of God, but revelation knowledge is part of the keys of the kingdom of God and understanding. And yet Peter gets a marvelous revelation from the Lord Jesus Christ <clears throat> about who the Lord Jesus Christ is from the Father. And that's how the kingdom operates. It's revelation knowledge on this earth, heaven on this earth, heaven's knowledge, heaven's wisdom to operate and be victorious in our lives. So flesh and blood didn't reveal that to him. And then he says to him, from now on you are Peter, which is the word Petros, which means a piece of rock, a piece of a rock. Okay, You are Petrus, Petra, uh, Petros, but on this rock, Petra, which means a massive rock, like the rock of Gibraltar. He says, upon this rock, not upon Peter, but upon this rock, I will build my church. That massive rock of Jesus Christ. And the statement is, not Peter, but the statement that he's going to build his church on, is that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. He's going to build his church. And then he says, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And this is what Jesus gave and he confirmed that it wasn't just given to Peter. The keys of the kingdom of heaven was given to all believers. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, he talks about, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So he's given the church keys in which we need to operate and be victorious and live a victorious life. Now, um, he says, I'm going to build my church. That is a, like a house... A house builder. He's going to build his house, which is the church. <clears throat> and the word church means the ones that are called. Called out. Okay? Where are we called out? He's going to call the church out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's what the church is all about. And he says that when he calls the church out, there's something that has been hindering, and that's the gates of hell. Something that has been hindering the church and will hinder the church until it's dealt with. And he says, but the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell will not have dominion over the church. But what are these gates? I've asked questions to people, and I've not understood it completely myself before. But I want to share with you, what are the gates of hell? We often say, oh, well, the devil, uh, we're going to just attack the devil, and he's not going to stop us, and we can do, and, uh, and it is important. We plunder hell and populate heaven. That's what the evangelist Reinhard Bonker coined. <clears throat> plunder hell and populate heaven. But what are these gates? Because it's important for us to understand in order that we may apply the keys of the kingdom of heaven. See, it's not the keys of earth, it's the keys of heaven, the kingdom of heaven operating 
right here on this earth. Now, if we look at the word, the gates, and hell, we need to understand what that is. Gates was always, in the Old uh, Testament times, and uh, in ancient times, gates always represented power. Because if you closed the gates, the walled cities, and you closed the gates, you limited those coming in and those going out. So the gates are very important. But, what is this hell that he's talking about? Because the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. The gates of hell, that word used, gates of hell, that word used is Hades. Here it is. The word uses Hades, which is the part or the place of departed spirits. And that's in the earth. The place of departed spirits. So, there is two places in Hades. The one is Abraham's bosom. And the other one is the burning hell. So there's two places in Hades. And Jesus says that the gates of Hades is not going to prevent the church. It is not going to have dominion over the church of Jesus Christ. It will not have dominion. He will build his church and these gates shall not hinder the church of Jesus Christ. But now in order to enter into Hades, you have to go through the gate, the gateway. And the gateway was opened by Adam. And the gateway is death. Okay? So, the gates, in order to get to Hades, you had to go through death. Because Adam opened the gateway to, to hell and Hades. Because God said to him, in the day that you sin, you will die and die. The day that you eat that fruit, which was forbidden, you will die, die. So Adam opened the gates. He opened the gateway to hell for every, but every person on this earth. There's no ways. And even <clears throat> there's only two, two men that were taken up to glory that never passed through the gateway of death. And those two uh, was uh, Elijah and Enoch. They were the only two that passed through uh, straight to glory without. But by all this, everyone passed through the gateway of death and then went in through Hades, either to Abraham's bosom or to burning hell. And he has a great gulf there. Now, how do we know this? How do we know this? Did we make this up? No. Jesus spoke about <coughs> the rich man and Lazarus. And he said when they died, <clears throat> the rich man was carried by the angel, or uh, carry, sorry, Lazarus was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom where he was comforted. This is the place that the, the, in the Old Covenant talks about paradise. Here it is. But he said the rich man, when he woke up, he was in hell and he was burning. And yet he could see right across the, 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 uh, ch the channel and <clears throat> he could see Lazarus being comforted. And he wanted to be comforted. Just touch, let, uh, uh, let him just touch the, the, with some water, touch the tip of my tongue because it's burning. So, the gateway <coughs> to Hades, the place of departed spirits, <coughs> is through death. We pass through death. Now, what happens is, all of the righteous dead were, lick, uh, were linked up in Hades, in Abraham's bosom. Until Jesus said, these gates, death was not going to hold these people captive. And how is Jesus going to overtake and overcome <coughs> the gates of hell? Because he has to overcome death. Who has the dominion of power and death was Satan. And he has to overcome Satan. And it says, <coughs> the scripture talks about that through death, he destroyed him that had the power of death, and that is the devil. He destroyed him. In other words, he set him at zero at naught. He set the gates at naught. He set the dominion. The dominion 
that Satan had over the departed spirits is no longer there. And the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus preached to the captives right here, and he emptied it out, and he took them all the way through into heaven. Okay? Because the scripture says when there was an earthquake and the veil of the temple was split from top to bottom, it says the graves were open, and the saints of old came out after the resurrection of Jesus and appeared, read in the book of John, read it and, and appeared to the, to the people around. And they were taken up to glory. Jesus said when he comes back, he will bring with them those that have gone on before. So now, when a believer dies, the Bible talks about it as being in, uh, asleep. Absent from this body is present with the Lord. So no longer do we, when we pass through the gates of death, do we go into Hades as a believer. We go straight into glory with God. Where it says, I'm preparing a place for you, that where I'll come and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So the gates of hell, Jesus has overtaken and overcome the gates of hell, which is death. And he's overcome that. And now he's given us authority to operate on this earth. And one of the things about the gates of hell, the fear of death. Jesus has overcome the fear of death. So we know the moment that we pass from this life through death, we will be with him in glory. We don't have to go to a purgatory or, or into Hades, Abraham's bosom, it's empty. But the glory of God, the place of God is open for every believer. The moment that we close our eyes in death, we wake in glory. That's for each one that believes. And now what he's done is he's given us keys. Keys of the kingdom of God to operate here on this earth without fear. That we don't have to fear. And what he's done for us, as Adam opened a door to death and destruction and everything that goes with it in this life, Jesus Christ opened a door. O P E N E D. Open <laughs> <laughs> to glory. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. He says, I am the doorway. He opened a doorway for us, and not through uh, into uh, uh, Hades, but he opened a doorway into glory. As Adam opened a doorway of death and destruction in this earth and eternity, Jesus Christ, the second Adam, the Bible says, he's the one that opened a doorway. And we can enter by faith, not by our good works, not by trying to be good, not by trying to tick off, oh, I was good today, I didn't do these things, and I'm not a sinner like those people. Every one of us has to go through the doorway of Jesus Christ to enter into glory. We have to go through that doorway. And the doorway is submission unto God. The doorway is, Lord, I can't earn my salvation by myself. I can't earn my salvation by my good works. I cannot go into the kingdom of God on my own abilities. But I'm relying upon the Lord Jesus Christ. His power, His abilities, what He has done, He has destroyed him that had the gates, the power of the gates of, of, of Hades. He destroyed him and gave us the gateway and said, I'm opening a new gateway. Not to Hades, but I'm opening a gateway to eternity through Jesus Christ. And the blood of Jesus washes and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And so as we receive him as our Lord and Savior, Lord, and it's a simple prayer, but it's a decision from the heart. I want to serve God. I want to be with Him in glory. I don't want to just get away with stuff on this earth and do all kinds of things and just make it to glory. I want to live by the power of the Spirit of God. You see, when Jesus spoke to the church and He spoke to John in the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 18, Jesus said this, I am He who lives 
and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And then he said, and I have the keys. I have the keys. I have the keys of hell, Hades, and of the grave. I have the keys of hell and death. So through Jesus Christ, he's opened up the gateway to the Father that we don't have to go through Hades. We don't have to be caught up uh, in Abraham's bosom because that's empty. He emptied it out. <clears throat> and thank God we don't have to touch the hellfire, the burning hell, because Jesus Christ has co completely done a work for us. So, and he has a name that is above every name. You see, this scripture is talking about three things. Heaven, earth, and under the earth. And the scripture says that God has given him a name because of his victory over death. God has given him a name above every name. <clears throat> that at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow of things on earth, of things in heaven, and things under the earth, and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So we need to understand that we no longer are hindered and controlled by the gates of hell. Because Jesus is building his church, and he's not taking them to Abraham's bosom, he's taking them right into glory. And that's when we die, we don't have to fear, we don't have to fear death, because as the Apostle Paul said, absent from the body is present with the Lord. So now he gives the church, I will give unto you the keys to the church, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now, it's not the keys to get into heaven. It's not the keys to get into heaven, but it's the keys of the kingdom to operate right here on this earth with the keys of the kingdom. Now, we discussed that last week as Paul prayed and he said, Lord, can you remove this message of Satan? Because he's buffeting me. He's hindering my work. He's hindering my ministry. And Jesus says to him, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. That's in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. I look up there because it's on my wall. I need to see that every single day of my life. I need to know it's not my strength, it's God's grace. And he said just those simple words to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. And then he says, that's it. So Paul, what are you going to do about it? Um, his strength. How are we going to draw on his strength? Paul has a revelation, the understanding of the application of that word, that key. And he says, therefore, most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast in my weakness that the power of Christ may rest on me, that the power of God may come upon me. We're not going to do this without the power of God. We're not going to do and, and live victorious without the power of God in our lives. Death shall not have dominion over you. Sin shall not have dominion over you. Because Jesus Christ has broken its power, and now He wants to enforce it through us, and in our lives that we can walk in victory and strength. Now, I want to give you a key, and we're going to discuss next week as well more about the keys of the kingdom. But I was praying one day. we have been in the full-time ministry for eight years, and... Um, we were kind of wondering what's going on, uh, what's happening uh, in, in, in life. I'm praying, I'm saying, Lord, <clears throat> I thought that you were opening a door for our uh, international ministry. And every single door, after we passed it, every single door is closed. What's going on? How am I going to feed my family? And what am I going to do? And I've been applying for different jobs, doing all kinds of stuff. And I'm praying and, uh, and I'm saying, Lord, but I'm a tither. And, and you will open the windows of heaven according to your word. And I'm praying all these things and, and I'm bringing up all my credentials, all my good things. And I hear the words in my heart. <clears throat> the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the righteous or the just. Wow. So I start, I get this revelation and I start thinking on it. Kind of wondering, what is the wealth of the sinner? 
Is it their money? How can I tap in? And God says to me, it's not about tapping in to their uh, money and taking it from them using um, clever tricks and clever, was, cle clever things to try and get their money from them. Some kind of con artist. Some kind of gimmick. And I'm thinking about these things. And I apply for different jobs and I'm, I don't know what to do. And I, I, <clears throat> I used to be able to sell and I'm going back into selling. And the Lord links me up with somebody in a company that was earning more money every month uh, than a new house cost. And a Greek guy, and, and he says, he calls me into the office and he says to me, listen, uh, let me just tell you something. You know what your problem is? You want to you wanna sell one big cake and earn and never have to work again. He says, why don't you think of it this way? Sell a slice of cake, each one, and you'll sell the whole cake eventually. But you'll be able to prosper and be blessed. Anyway, I'll carry on in this work and all that. And then the Lord sends somebody. You see, often we say, and I pray, and I pray every day in my life, Lord, I need divine wisdom. And I pray for wisdom. And the Lord sends me somebody, connects with me, who I knew, uh, was in marketing and business, and the guy by the name of James Cagney. Not the actor, but James Cagney. He comes along and, and he says, how's it going and things. And I said, well, you know, uh, uh, times are tough things, and I've got a lot of excuses. And he says, so what are you doing now that you're not in full-time ministry? Uh, I said, well, uh, I've got these five things which I'm busy with. And I've got this and that, and I went through all the things that I'm busy doing. And uh, I used to go to my boot in the morning and open up the boot and have a look and see um, what's in there. Uh, am I this or am I that? Am I going to sell this, that, all these different things? <laughs> so he says to me, what is the product that you know more about than all the other products? So I told him. So he says, so why aren't you making money? Uh, I said, well, um, you know, and I gave a lot of excuses. He says, no, let me just tell you something. It's because you can't sell. What? You're talking to a guy that was successful in sales, and you're telling me you can't sell. He says, you can't sell, and I want you to come on a course with me. You be the cameraman, and uh, you can do the course for free, and then apply it in your life, and you can then teach it. So I did. And the course... Uh, that he shared was based on this book. Okay, I don't know if you can still get it. Dynamics of Professional Selling. Uh, we've tried to get a hold of this book, but I want to tell you something. You can see it's in uh, pieces uh, and it's underlined and all that. I began to work this book and work through it. And eventually Brenda typed it out for me, all the keys, which was mainly most of the whole book anyway. And um, I began to apply this. I applied it in my life. All these keys. You see these keys. The wealth of the sinners laid up for the righteous. They've got some keys of understanding to operate in this life. And that's what this scripture is all about. <clears throat> in Luke chapter 16 verse 8. It talks about the unjust steward. I'm not going to go into it. Because this is a whole teaching on its own. But. And the Lord commended the unjust steward. The Lord is actually not God. The Lord is the master of the steward. Who employed him. And Jesus says <clears throat> that the Lord commended the unjust Jew because he had done wisely. And then he, Jesus says, for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. They are wiser. And I was thinking about this. This is one of the scriptures. <clears throat> wiser than the children of light. The children of, you know why? Because they are so focused on making sure that this life, that they are secured in this life. The problem is they never secure the next one. God wants us to have absolute eternal security with Him through Jesus Christ and living right by the grace and gospel of Jesus Christ and have that security and have our eternal rewards and that we may reign in this life by one Christ Jesus. And as I did... Uh, I started applying all these principles, going to see clients, applying them, and uh, got involved in a company. Brian was there with me in that same company, and uh, I started winning uh, trophies, okay? And a uh, number of trophies I started winning for best sales in that month, and uh, very excited about that. And then finally, as I applied the key principles 
that I was taught. Finally, I took the, 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 the major trophy uh, <laughs> to the salesman of the year over all the other guys, okay? Not that they were that uh, uh, bad, they were all good. And we were close on the, 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 um, the sales that we did. And then eventually, uh, <clears throat> I sent out this book, which I trained, um, if you can see it on the, it is the seven keys that add the master's touch to your sales and business presentations. And I did uh, those keys that I learned, I started putting them in, in practice and helping others to do that very same thing, to help. But now what God wants us to do, God wants us to reign in this life. And Jesus says, I'm going to give you keys. The keys to operate in this life. The keys come from heaven. The wisdom comes from heaven that we can operate here on this earth. And it may be that God sends somebody that has wisdom in this world, in this life, to help us along. Like he sent James Cagney to me and to help me. Thank God for that. Thank God that we can be obedient, that we can help others. It's not always about how much can I make out of this deal. Do you know what? Put it in the hands of God. There's some people we can help, and by the grace of God, we do it with all our hearts, without expecting a reward from them. And thank God that they can help. We want to empower others. God wants us to be empowered in this life by one Christ Jesus. So He gives us the keys of the kingdom. Whatever we bind on earth and whatever we loose as a lock, whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. And God wants to loose His power on our behalf via the keys of the kingdom. And when we get the key, write it down. Put it on your wall because that's the keys of the kingdom to help us. And then pray for understanding. Because Paul received, he received a key, and then he received understanding. How can I apply that in my life? How can I apply these keys of the kingdom? Because Jesus said, hell is not going to hold you captive. Death is not going to hold you captive. No excuse can hold you captive if you want to break free in the name of Jesus. Break forth in the name of Jesus. He is Lord of our breakthrough. And like David said, by my hand, God has destroyed my enemies. By my hand. You see, we are workers together with God. So let's work together with Him. And it's not just about receiving a key. Ah, oh, i got the keys. Okay, I can now operate. And I can bind and loose and do whatever. <clears throat> Those keys are keys that you keep. They are keys that we keep. We put it on the wall. We put it in a book that we can look at. Daily, that we can see that operation because that's what transforms us into the image of Jesus. That's what transforms our circumstance by the grace of God. That we can say, like with Paul, I am exceedingly joyful in all of my tribulation. Really, Paul? I used to think, man, does this oak, what is he doing? But he understood that he took a key. By the grace of God, a key, the first fruit principle, we'll probably speak about that next week. That master key, if we understand these principles, we can operate in them. And we can walk in victory. And we can do what God has called us to do. <clears throat> Empowered by the Holy Spirit. Raised up mighty valor to the full measure of the stature of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> so thank God, as Adam opened the door of death and destruction... And uh, Hades, Jesus Christ opened a brand new door for us that everyone that believes can enter through that gateway into eternal life and have eternal life now, living right now with an absolute assurance that Jesus Christ, the day that we close our eyes in sleep of death, is the day that we wake up in the glory of God, in His presence, by His grace, by His power, so we thank God that He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask, think, or even imagine, according to the power, the power of the living God, the power of the Holy Spirit that works in each one of us. So we take these keys like I did, take all the principal keys, 
Write them down. Apply them daily. You see, through faith and patience, we inherit the promises of God. It's not just about clicking our fingers. Yeah, okay, Lord, I prayed for us now. Okay, now, now give it to me. And God may say, listen, I'm going to give you some keys to operate. Why don't you have a look in the book of Proverbs? There's a whole bunch of keys of wisdom to operate in. So we can reign in this life by one Jesus Christ. And we thank God for His divine grace. We thank God for the keys. And now, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that we have the divine wisdom of God to take the keys of the kingdom and to apply them in this life, that we may reign in life, that we are empowered by the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord, that we use the effort, we sit our hand to the plow, and we never look back until it's absolutely completed, until we can say with Paul, I have finished my race. I have run the course, finished my race, and there's laid up for me a crown of glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. Bless the Lord. We thank you for being with us. And uh, we're looking forward to next week's exciting message in Jesus' name. Amen.